Anybody up for a game of cards? Now, in our discussions about sequences and combinations, we've talked about sequences that have order with duplicates. We've talked about sequences that have order but no duplicates. Let's talk about something called combinations. Now, combinations, and specifically, we're going to talk about the ones without repetition or duplication. This one's easier than the one combinations with repetition. We'll talk about that in the next lesson. Now, remember, the general expression we had for permutations was if you have n items in a set that you're pulling from, you do the permutations, you pull r, at r out of that, you get this expression that is n factorial. In other words, the number of possible sequences. And so you get the factorial by saying, okay, first we, we pick n, one out of n, and then we pick one one out of n minus one, then we pick one out of n minus two, and so forth. And then if you want to not pick a total of n, in other words, if r is much less than or even just less than n, you're going to have n minus r factorial. And that is going to take care of the ones that you didn't pick. Now, what we're going to talk about with this lesson is taking the order out of that. And it's actually quite simple. Um, if we have a sequence that's with order, of our elements, then what we can do is we can take the order out of that sequence. So take order out of that sequence, <laughs> pretty much what I said, right? By dividing by what? Well, the number of possible sequences. For example, if I have, I have three items, they can be put in an order of three times two times one or six. Well, if I have six possible combinations of the same three elements, how do I take the order out? I divide by six. I divide by R factorial, okay? And this is called R combinations, all right? Let's revisit our set that's made up of the letters B, I, T. Remember, we did a set of sequences, all the possible sequences. The set size is three, and then the sequence length was three. Remember, we did that set of sequences, and we came up with B, I, T, B, T, I, uh, I, B, T, I, T, B, and then T, B, I, and T, I, B. All right, those were our sequences. Now, that was pretty easy to get that total number of six. Remember, it was three, uh, the permutations of a set size of three with the sequence length of three, which was three factorial over three minus three factorial, which was equal to three factorial over zero factorial, which was equal to three factorial, which was equal to six, right? Now, taking the order out of this, well, if I take the order out of that, I'm left with just the three letters, right? Um, if the order doesn't matter, then all of these all of these sequences actually melt down to just the one sequence of B, I, and T. And so what you get is 3P3 divided by 3 factorial, and that's 3 factorial over 3 factorial, which is equal to 1. Now this is referred to as combinations. And it's actually got a similar representation. In other words, you have NCR, Sometimes you'll see C with N comma R written like that. But basically what you're looking at is N factorial over, and then you have the N minus R factorial, just like you have with the permutations, except this time we also take out an additional R factorial, divide by R factorial, in order to take out the order in the sequence that we have created. Now let's change things around a little bit. I've got my sequence, B-I-T, or my set, B-I-T. N is equal to three. I'm gonna change R equal to two. 
Now, when I set r equal to 2, what that means is I'm going to leave one of the characters out. Now, whenever we did the permutations, notice that we also had, just like with r equal to 3, we had six possible permutations. We had, what was it, b i, b t, and then we had i b and i t, and then we had t b and t i. Those were our six permutations. The problem is, is when we want to take order out, notice that I've got IB and BI. Those are actually the same thing when order doesn't matter. I've got BT and TB. Those are the same when order doesn't matter. And then I've got IT and TI whenever it comes to any order. So what I need to do is pull out those duplicates whenever it comes to order. So what I've got is three choose two, and that's going to give me three factorial divided by, we'll start out with the permutations formula, three minus two factorial, so that was the n minus r factorial, but then remember, we're going to add in that, in the denominator, the two factorial. This takes out the order. And so we get three factorial, that's three times two times one, and then divided by two factorial, that's two times one, times this is 3 minus 2, that's 1, 1 factorial, so that's 1. We'll cancel out some things here, right? And we get 3. 3. Did we have 3? Yes, we've got 1, 2, and 3 different combinations there. The math works out. Let's try a longer sequence of letters. How about the letters in binary? 6 different letters. We're not going to talk about whenever I have duplicates in the set that I'm pulling from. These are still distinct letters. So in this case, we've got n is equal to 6, but let's make r equal to 3 this time. We're only going to pull three letters out, and so we're going to leave, o leave out three letters every time that we pull three out, all right? And so n equals three, r equals six. We're going to say, well, let's, let's actually figure this all out. What happens if order matters and duplicates allowed or repetitions allowed. That was, remember, exponentiation or the multiplication principle. And so what I get is n, which is 6, to the r, which is 3, and I get 216 for that. So there are 216 different combinations if I just simply pulled any letter out and then, then pulled another letter out and then pulled another letter out, created three letters, and any of the three letters allowing for duplicates can come from those six, six letters. Now, if we went order matters, but no duplicates, then that was the permutations, right? And so what we had was 6p3. And the expression for that is 6 factorial over 6 minus 3 factorial. So we've got 6 factorial over 3 factorial. Well, 3 factorial taken out of 6 factorial basically just leaves us with 6 times 5 times 4, right? Because we're going to take the 3 and the 2 and the 1 out of the product in the numerator. And 6 times 5 times 4 is equal to 120. And so that was order matters. Now what if we do any order, but once again, no duplicates. If we do any order, no duplicates, that's 6 choose 3. And in that case, we get exactly what we had for the permutations, the 120. But this time, what we're going to do is we're going to divide out any of the ordering that we can have with three elements. That's 3 factorial. Well, that's 120 over 6, which is equal to 20. Now let's talk about this hand of cards. Let's say that I want to draw five cards from a deck of 52. All right, so I need to pull five cards out of this deck. One, two, three, four, five. Ugh, that's a pretty horrible hand. <laughs> but let's not talk about the hand, because there are some good hands in the set that we're going to pull from. So I've got these cards. Now, I've noticed that I do have a pair here. Um, and I could sort these in ascending order. So clearly, since I have rearranged things, 
order doesn't matter, does it? Well, since order doesn't matter, we're looking at the combinations, right? The R combinations. So what's our value for N and what's our value for R? Well, our value for N is the size that we're of, of the set that we're drawing from. That's 52. And our R is the number that we're pulling out, 5. So what we're looking for is 52 choose 5, right? Well, let's see if order does matter what we've got. We've got 52 P5, which is equal to 52 factorial divided by, what is that, 52 minus 5 factorial. This is equal to 52 factorial over, what is that, 47 factorial? All right, and in fact, I could multiply, I could expand this somewhat. I could have this 52 times 51 times 50 times 49 times 48 times 47 factorial. All right, and I could divide that by 47 factorial. Well, notice that the 47 factorials cancel out, leaving me with 52 times 51 times 50 times 49 times 48. And it turns out that that guy is equal to 311,875,200. That's a lot of options. But remember, this is whenever order matters. I have to take order out because whenever I hold my hand of cards, I can swap those things around. So what we're really looking for is 52 choose five, right? And so this becomes the 52 times 51 times 50 times 49 times 48. So 52 times 51 times 50 times 49 times 48 divided by what? Well, all the combinations that we can have in terms of order for the five cards, and that is five factorial. Well, five factorial, that guy is equal to, five factorial is equal to five times four times three times two times one, which is equal to, what is that? That's 120, which means that we've got this 311,875,200 divided by 120, and that gives us 2,598,960. You can check me on my math, but I'm pretty sure we got that one right. Now we're gonna add a quick corollary to our discussion here, something that I hope that, that will be obvious after I do this little mathematical process here. I've got n choose r, right? And n choose r is just n factorial divided by r factorial, and then also still in the denominator, n minus r factorial, all right? So that's n factorial divided by the product of r factorial times n minus r factorial. Well, this is going to look strange, but r, I can actually say that r is equal to n minus n minus r, right? And so I'm going to replace that guy, and I'm going to just simply say n factorial, and this is going to be divided by this over here, n minus n minus r factorial, n minus r factorial. Well, if I now treat this as my r, then this is also r. And this is kind of an n minus r prime, so to speak, uh, factorial times r prime factorial. And you'll see that what this in the end equals is n choose n minus r. Well, that's kind of weird. So what this is saying is that I could do one of two things. I could either give you five cards, right? And then the, the 52 choose five, that's how many different ways you could get these cards. Or what I could say is I could get rid of all but five cards. These, this larger stack, the all but, the 47 cards, the all but the five that I'm keeping, I get rid of those, they have no order. That's exactly the same set of combinations as if I simply said uh, 52 choose uh, five. So 52 choose five is the same thing as 52 choose the 47 that I'm not going to get in my hand. As for the last one, combinations with repetitions. Tends to be the most difficult to wrap your mind around, so we're gonna dedicate a whole video to it.